Um, hello, and welcome to my lightning talk, 10 reasons your application is inaccessible and what you can do about it. My name is Elise Christiansen, and I am a senior front-end developer in Aplia. And since this is just a lightning talk, I will not go hard in on to how to technically solve all these issues. I will just try to get you aware of them and give you a little nudge on how to solve them in a superficial manner. Um, you know, accessibility is legally required to ensure that all websites are accessible to everyone, including people with disabilities. So I will begin with some of the more technical issues. Issue number one, insufficient alternative text for images and graphics. And also issue number two, failure to use available text alternatives for multimedia elements, such as videos and audio files. A person with blindness or deafness needs to be able to get the same information as everyone else. To detect some of these problems, you can use a scanner like Pali. Um, a scanner will be able to tell you if an image or video lack any text alternative at all, but a scanner might not be able to recognize if the alternative text provides enough uh, context for the image or video. I will give you an example. Uh, an image of a cat that is trying to catch a bird might have the descriptive text, a cat and a bird, but that doesn't say anything about what this image is trying to tell in this context. For an article about birds that are going extinct, the image text might be bird being hunted by a cat. But for an article about a cat's behavior, especially outside, the image text might be cat hunting the bird for fun. So make sure that all multimedia elements not only have a text alternative, but that the text also gives away all the relevant information for the context the multimedia is in. Issue number three, missing a bad link text. A common mistake is missing or simply just bad link text. Websites are mostly full of links that are either taking you to a new page or taking you to another place on the same page. But we as developers, developers have a tendency to put small icons or insufficient text like read more as link text. And how is a person with blindness supposed to know what more means without having any context? So use descriptive link text for uh, all links. For example, read more about bees for an article about bees instead of just read more. And use ARIA labels for icons. For example, go to homepage wrapped around a house icon. You can use scanners to catch a lot of the missing links, uh, but a scanner might not be able to distinguish between a good and a bad link text. Issue number four, inadequate contrast between text and background, which can make it difficult for visually impaired people to read your content, and solving this also makes it better for everyone to read your content. You can get help from scanners, uh, a lot of contrast ratio errors is possible to capture with an accessibility scanner like Pali. And you can also use your browser's inspect tool. The inspect tool in the browser is a very useful tool. Most browsers let you hover over an element and see the contrast ratio right then and there. You can see here in my examples that if you see below accessibility, one has a high number uh, and one has a low number. And the high number is accepted, that's a good enough uh, contrast ratio, and the other is, has a warning symbol on it. So that's a too bad contrast ratio. So yeah, use the inspect tool. But remember, text on images and gradients are not that easily caught with just computer tools. So you have to manually check all the colors in the background of an image or gradient up against the text color you have put on top of it. Issue number five, lack of content structuring with proper use of headings and lists. For assistive technologies to work optimally, the web app needs to be written with the correct tags, especially the right use of heading tags. The different numbers are for semantic and not for styling, as many people use them for. It's important to begin building the web app with the appropriate tags from the very beginning, because rewriting it will take time. So my best tip here is that every time you want to use another div, try to think about another tag to use. You can use nav for navigations or p for paragraphs, etc. Issue number six, key missing keyboard navigation or incorrect focus order, hindering people who rely on a keyboard to navigate your page, aka people who can't use a mouse on a computer. 
One easy way to check your page yourself is to use your own keyboard. That's the quickest and easiest way to check your page. Just use tab and tab through everything and make sure that everything is logically ordered and accessible. Make sure you have used the right HTML tags because most, um, most, um, yeah, uh, most of the uh, issues with the tab uh, <laughs> with the focusing on, yeah. Uh, HTML takes care of a lot of the, yeah, focus. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad English, <laughs> I'm trying. Anyway, uh, you can use tab index in need, but uh, yeah, mm, try not to use uh, tab index. And now we're moving on to some of the more structural issues. Uh, issue number seven, inadequate testing with accessibility tools and user testing with individuals with various disabilities. It's difficult to develop and test for challenges you don't have yourself. When you develop something, you tend to take your own experience as a starting point. And you assume that users, users of screen re readers and assistive devices are experts themselves, but they are not. They use screen readers because they have to. David, a 75-year-old who just started to go blind but has never worked on a computer in his life, doesn't have any better conditions to know to, than you to know how to navigate a screen reader. So, yeah, you need to set up good testing routines. User testing is extremely important. User te test on people with disabilities and make sure that testing with disability devices is part of the estimate. But estimations takes us right to the next issue. Lack of accessibility awareness during the design and the development process. Developers tend to forget about accessibility when they estimate, and when the development has started, it's too late to incorporate it, because one may feel there isn't enough time. Take responsibility and focus on accessibility already in the planning process. Make sure every participant knows how important this is. The customer, the designer, the developer, the editor who are going to publish content on the web app. Everyone needs to be on board. However, the fact that everyone wants to focus on it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone knows how to. And that takes us right to the next issue. Issue number nine. Inadequate training and awareness among developers and designers about the importance of accessibility and how to achieve it. Encourage developers and designers to take courses. There are plenty of easily accessible courses out there that can be done in just a few hours of the workday they are definitely worth the investment. And the last reason, economics. People believe it's much more expensive than it is, so they fall into the trap of using accessibility overlays instead of coding the website universally from scratch. Design for simpler and cheaper websites. Keep the routines and guidelines in mind and scale down functionality and needs. Don't compromise on accessibility. A black and white website in Titan Roman without any design at all, with just all elements listed one after the other, is way better than a website that is not universally designed. At least it doesn't exclude anyone. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, you can add me on your preferred socials if you want to. That's my LinkedIn QR code. Uh, yeah. And you can also hit me up on the Slack channel if you want to ask me more questions. Uh, you get bonus point if you know where my profile picture is from. Thank you. <laughs>